Hey guys. Well, we're gonna wrap it up with the fifth thing, the five things that you need for home ownership. We talked about income, we talked about credit, we talked down payment, closing costs, and the fifth thing. Fifth thing, you might say, Mark, well, if I had the income, my credit's good, I got the down payment, closing costs, what else is important? What can it what what could it possibly be? I like to to term this miscellaneous slash reserves. Reserves really being the big key. But let's talk about it. What would what would you say miscellaneous means, Mark? What, what would that be? That means like through the process of buying a home, you're going to have some costs associated with it. Most likely, more likely than not, if you're not a cash buyer, or even if you are a cash buyer, but you want to see the value of the house, the mortgage lender or yourself is going to order what's called an appraisal to make sure that the value of the house, what, you're, what you put in for your offer and are under contract for matches um, the value of it. So if I offered 450, I want to make sure that the house is valued at 450 or higher. If it's higher, that means I have equity in the house. So that cost is typically for townhouse, condo, single family house. I would say on average, anywhere between 450 and 650 on average, somewhere in that range. You're going to need that up front. They're going to take that through a debit card, a uh, credit card, um, you know, right out of your account, whatever the case may be. So you're going to need access to that money. The next thing that you're going to not need, but we'd really, really, really recommend. Think about it. You're about to buy a house, a house that's either been lived in for as short as six months, a year, two years, or it's been lived in for well over 30 years. It's a huge price point. It's probably the biggest investment, the biggest amount of money, the biggest uh, payment that you're going to make, right? A roof over your head. So you want to make sure that what you're buying is in pretty decent shape. And if it's not, what can I negotiate for the seller or the builder to correct? So you're going to want to get what's called a private home inspection. We have uh, great inspectors that we trust people that have drones if they're allowed um, tools to look behind the walls they're going to test your outlets look at the roof make sure there's signs of any leaks right um, is hot water coming out you know even behind the walls like they have tools like that so those are typically going to range, I would say, of course, if you're buying a mansion, you know, you got 10,000 plus square feet, it's going to be a lot more than the average home. But the average home, I would say, you're probably looking at a 350 to maybe 550 for a typical home inspection. Then in Georgia and, and other parts of the country, you'd probably want to, especially, especially if you have a basement home, you want to test for what's called radon, radon gas. It's odorless, colorless, but the EPA says anything 4.0 or higher could potentially be damaging to you, like a cancer risk. And remember guys, it's odorless. And that's actually something that has come up in a lot of our clients' homes throughout the years. I want to say 50%, but a good enough percent. And actually it happened in one of our houses. And there is a way that's not a reason to not buy the house. They do have tools, what's called radon mitigation uh, companies. It's typically this, this tube that is implanted into the foundation of your home and it has a fan that is attached to it. So it draws out this radon gas, which is found underneath the soil of your home. And it kind of look, think of it like as a gutter, right? And it comes out of your house, they drill a hole, you know, and seal it up so you don't lose any kind of insulation or anything like that. And it goes off into the atmosphere. It's no longer uh, so prevalent in your house. You know, if it drops down from a four point to a three or two or one, whatever the case may be, or somewhere in between, you are in a much better uh, situation. That typically, you know, they, they, it's a little device that they, they'll put in there for about 48 hours. Um, and most of the, um, 
our, our, our home inspectors, private home inspectors, will be able to you know put this tool in there for you. And that's typically gonna cost you maybe as little as $75, it could be $200, again, depending on uh, you know demand, time of the year, um, size of the basement, size of the home, things that have to be done. Um, so th those are like out of pocket miscellaneous expenses that you know you have to 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 really consider of course there's other things like um you know when you get the home inspection done there might be things that the seller is not willing to fix but you still want the house and it might be something like the air conditioning hvac just needs to be serviced it could be this outlet it's not working so i need to hire an electrician electrician to replace that outlet um, not things that necessarily cost you tens of thousands of dollars, but you have to have miscellaneous money to address those things. Getting prepared, like if the house, the people are taking their appliances with them or, you know, the refrigerator or washer and dryer, it's a new home and it doesn't come with one of those, uh, which typically happens nowadays. A lot of the new homes are coming with the microwave, the, the oven or the double ovens or the cooktop, stuff like that. And so you're going to be, you know, responsible, you know, for getting those type of items. And so, so those are the two main things, the appraisal and the private home inspection and what comes out of the, that inspection. Finally, what um, I want to talk about is reserves. I've learned this, my, my, you know, working with a lot of clients, um, I've had clients, you know, um, uh, lose their job, I've had clients um, have a death in the family, have to relocate, have to move, and the worst thing that you'd want to do is lose your home. Lose your home to foreclosure or be forced into what's called a short sale where the bank will work with you to try to sell your house at or possibly at an agreeable amount uh, for them to uh, not foreclose on your house. And um, But either way, in a short sale or foreclosure is going to live on your credit report for seven years, a bankruptcy, 10 years. So reserves, I watch a lot of um, CNBC, uh, Susie Orman, Kiplinger Magazine, uh, CNBC Pro. Like I subscribe to a lot of things. I listen to a lot of financial podcasts. The one overarching theme of all of them is you need a reserve fund. You need that rainy day fund. So you're looking at, at a minimum, I would say six to 12 months worth of reserves. That means if you got laid off of your job and it, look what happened with COVID, right? And a lot of people in the, the retail industry or a lot of people in the restaurant industry or whatever the case may be, or a business, you know, you are, um, now without a check and potentially, you know, if there was no stimulus or there was no government help, you know, it's all on you. So that reserve could be in multiple forms. That can be in the form of a checking account, savings account, 401k, uh, you know, investment account, crypto account, whatever the case may be. But do you have six months, eight months, 12 months? to pay that $1,500, $2,000, $2,500 mortgage payment? Do you have that? And to get to your job interviews, do you have enough to pay for that car, that car note, right? Do you have money to put food on the table? So it's not just, can I cover that mortgage payment? It's, can I live my lifestyle? I'm gonna obviously, because I'm out of a job right now, and in between jobs, I need to, 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 to scale back. I'm not taking European vacations and buying Gucci, right? But can I live off the bare necessities? Can I keep that roof over my head? So having the reserves, having the proof of funds so that when you are going to that closing table and they say you have $20,000 to bring to, um, to the closing table, tell me that you don't have $20,500 to your name overall. Like, 
you don't have a 401k, you don't have investment accounts, you don't have a rainy day fund, you, after this, you have $500 to your name. What are you going to do to furnish that house? What are you going to do to put gas in your car? What if the day after you close on that home, you lost your job? These are what reserves are for. So we've talked about down payment assistance. <coughs> we talked about people with credit issues. We've talked about um, paying Peter to pay Paul, of uh, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Um, this all has to do with reserves. So I want you to, to not just look at the income, the credit, the down payment, the closing cost. But I want you to look at this, this uh, reserves, this miscellaneous, you know. Excuse me, I need a little drink. Um, but there is going to be costs associated outside of the typical down payment and uh, closing costs, like we talked about, appraisal fees, inspection fees, what comes out of the inspection, and just furnishing your house. You know, I mean, if you're seeing this house that has a two-story family room, a master with a sitting area, and you're on a blow-up mattress, then you're not ready. You're just not ready. So you could have all those four things and still not be ready. And that's what I want to get through to you. And when you're thinking about maximizing your budget or you're like, I have to live in the most expensive part of Atlanta. No, be open. Take the time before you reach out to us by watching the videos. Oh, he's doing a video in South Fulton or Fairburn or Noonan or Douglasville or Austell. But I've had my eye on Smyrna and Roswell and Buckhead and Alpharetta. But what does your budget say? What does your reserve say? What do the property taxes look in, like in certain, those, in certain areas? Do you realize your first home most likely won't be your last home? That you might have a kid, you might have pets, you might get married. You might have a significant other. Like these are all things that life, it's called life, right? So you have to look at real estate. It's the biggest investment that you're going to make. And you're going to want a team behind you that is honest with you. Why our motto is welcome to the family is because we are a family. We are literally a family. The advice that we give you is no different than I would give to my, my grandmother, my mother, my father, my aunt, my uncle, my own child. And that's what we do here at Great Homes ATL. We don't want you just to get the house. We want you to keep the house and get the second house and get the third house and get the investment properties and get the land and pass on generational wealth and to have a sense of security because you had a great credit score. You had solid, steady income. You had your down payment, no problem. You understood closing costs and you had the reserves and your miscellaneous to enjoy the house, to grow in the house, to improve the house, to maintain the house. So hopefully guys, these five factors for home ownership were very helpful for you. I hope you will bookmark it, save it, watch it on Instagram TV, on YouTube, and then hit us up to start the process, to get your pre-approval, to then have a scheduled Zoom consultation with us, and then go out there and find a home or run comps for you and get you top notch, top dollar, top marketing campaign to sell your house. All right, guys, I can't wait to say welcome to the family. I'll talk to you soon.